the first thing you want to do when you, if you're going to change a pulley on an alternator <laughs> here in the mech man shop and we, we just want to talk about pulleys for a second we get calls all the time uh, people need to change a pulley or uh, modify something or do a custom pulley or something like that we want to just want to talk for a minute about the best way that you can handle that in the field uh, ideally you'll have a calibrated impact gun with the correct amount of torque and something that steadies the pulley correctly but most people don't have access to that so uh, what you can do if we don't recommend it but it, you know, as a, as a last ditch effort, you can change the pulley in the field. Um, there are a wide variety of different guns available. Uh, electric impacts are pretty popular nowadays. They're super strong. There's a lot of really strong uh, uh, air impact guns as well. And you just need, need to be careful that number one, your gun has enough torque to properly torque the pulley nut onto the alternator because the nut torque is the only thing that, that steadies the pulley on the alternator, holds it rigid. Uh, you also need to be careful, like for example, this fuel brushless Milwaukee gun is a beast. And if you turn this thing all the way up, you can't actually distort the threads on the rotor shaft, on the threaded rotor shaft. So you wanna be careful of what you're using uh, by, I mean, when you do this, you hold, you hold the pulley by hand. Uh, and when the nature of doing that, when you hit it with an impact, the pulley is gonna move some, your hand is absorbing a lot of that torque and that helps prevent you from over torquing the pulley nut. Um, but, but there again, you have to be careful with these, some of these big dog guns that are coming out on the market nowadays, it is possible to distort the threads. So um, the first thing you wanna do, when you, if you're gonna change a pulley on an alternator, you wanna make sure that there is ample clearance between the back of the pulley and the face of the alternator. You put that on there, we have about one millimeter clearance there, which is a good good guideline. Uh, if you have less than that, with heat expansion and other things, the back of the pulley can actually contact the front case of the alternator. And once that happens, it's gonna go all the aluminum and everything's wrecked. You just ruined Christmas, pretty much. So after you do that, you wanna make sure that you have an, the proper amount of threaded shaft sticking through. Once we put this pulley on there, you'll notice that all of the threaded shaft in there, it's hard to see in the video, um, it's all threaded. If you have some unthreaded portion of the shaft sticking through the pulley, that can be a problem because when you run down your nut, you'll run out of threads and it will destroy the nut and destroy the shaft. So you wanna take a look at all that stuff and, and some of this can be remedied with spacers. There again, this is not ideal, this is not something we recommend but we realize people are doing custom applications with custom pulleys and other things, and you need to be able to service this stuff in an emergency in the field. So that's what this video is about. So if you, if you have too much unthreaded shaft sticking through, you can use pulley shims behind the nut. Once again, this is not ideal. This is not what we recommend, but if it gets you out of a, of a bad situation, you can do it. You can put these on, on the shaft and put your pulley nut on. Of course, always start the nut by hand so that you don't cross thread it. And you put that on there. And I'm not gonna use, well, I will, I will go ahead and use the big gun, but I'm gonna turn it down to a level two setting. Notice it's on two out of, out of four settings. If you put this thing on four, it's gonna distort the threads at least, and at worst, possibly snap the shaft off. And of course, you have to use a, a, a 22 millimeter or 7 8 thin wall six point socket. A standard impact socket will not fit in most small diameter pulleys. If it's a uh, non Denso based design, you're going to need a 15 16 socket, slightly larger socket. Also, thin wall, deep well, six point. If you use a 12 point, you're likely going to break the socket with the impact gun. So you get it started. all you need. Of course, the, the fit is so tight that it actually will stick in the pulley there. The, the clearance is very, very tight. You can see where it's been rubbing the anodizing off of the, off of the socket. So when, when also when you're exchanging pulleys, it's important to note the depth. 
Notice how shallow the back wall of this pulley is. You compare that to this pulley, this pulley right here is not gonna have hardly any threaded shaft protruding through the, the hole whatsoever. So in this particular circumstance, this pulley, if you absolutely have to use this pulley for, your, for whatever system, whatever setup you're doing, this is gonna have to be machined down until the appropriate amount of threaded shaft protrudes through for full thread engagement on the nut. Um, also, pulley, you know, you can't just go around changing pulleys, doing whatever you want. You need to calculate the diameter of your crankshaft pulley, the idle RPM of the engine, the, the true maximum RPM of the engine. A lot of guys go, oh, I built this motor, it'll spin 8,500 RPM, but realistically, it'll never go past 6,500 RPM. In that scenario, set the rev limiter at 6,500 RPM so that you're not overspeeding not only the alternator, but the power steering pump, uh, any other air conditioning compressor, any other accessories you have on the engine. Don't try and be a hero and go, oh, my motor will spin to 7,800, but realistically, I'll never take it there. If that's the case, pulley your accessories such that it's not gonna overspeed things. Um, V-belt pulleys, a lot of people, everyone, a lot of guys with, with old school GM applications that have a single V-belt, sometimes they have a dual V-belt pulley. They, you know, I, they want a 400 amp alternator. Well, I'm sorry, that's just not gonna work out for your application. If you want a 400 amp alternator, you're gonna have to switch it to a six rib serpentine drive. There is no way you're gonna drive more than about 170 amps off of a single V-belt without just melting the belt off the car. Once the belt starts slipping, you don't get the extra amperage anyways, so you're just wasting your time and wasting parts. So if you, if you absolutely need that much amperage, you, you need to look into a serpentine conversion or, or something along those lines. So that's, that's why we don't advertise single V-belt alternators above 170 amps. We can build them 240, 320, 400, whatever you want, but there's no point in doing that if it's just gonna smoke the belt off of the car. So as long as you check to make sure that you have ample clearance between the back of the pulley and the front case of the alternator and make sure that you're not running the nut past the threads and there's enough threads to where the nut has full thread engagement, you can use pulley shims to, to get you where you need to be. It's not a, an ideal situation, but sometimes you have to do what needs to be done. We, we, we have race cars, we have car audio vehicles, we have stuff here and uh, we know how that works. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this will give you some guidance and, and the, the right way to be able to, or not even the right way, but a way that you can swap a pulley if necessary. And oh, and one last thing, if you're trying to swap a pulley in order to make up for not having to run a shorter belt, don't do that, please. We put a small pulley on there for a reason. It's not that hard to, to get the correct length belt from your local Napa Auto Parts store. We have a, a link on our website that we would happily send to you, or you can check it out on our tech resources link. Uh, that small pulley is on there for a reason. We engineer each alternator with the correct diameter pulley to work with your crankshaft pulley diameter, your idle RPM, and your maximum RPM. So please don't try and swap your stock pulley on there because you're too lazy to go buy the correct length belt because otherwise you're, you're gonna have problems and the alternator's not gonna perform how it should. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please just message us, comment, email us, call us, whatever you need to do, www.mechman.com or 1888 Mechman. Thanks for watching.